exponential function b raised to the x power b is the base x is the independent variable so for exponential function when you check out the definition they will say give b raised to the x and b must be greater than zero and the base is not equals to one because when the base is equals to one then the x is meaningless right because one raised to any power is always one and then when base is greater than zero so that in the previous video i gave you an example where we have f of x equals to 2 raised to the x power right so when the base is equals to 2 in this video i want to talk about this what happened when the base is between 0 and 1 i said not equal to 1 and greater than 0 right so between 1 and 0 we have decimals like a 0 0.5 0 0.25 0 0.75 when you when you look up for an examples on, on on your textbook and online most likely you will get a f of x equals to 2 raised to the x uh, 3 raised to the x, 4 raised to the x, so on and so forth, right? So have you think about what happened when the base is between 0 and 1? A typical example that I would like to use is f of x equals to 1 half raised to the x power. So my base 1 half is between 0 and 1. So the graph of 1 half raised to the x looks like this. The domain is all real number. You can let x be any value you want. And since the curve is always above the x-axis, so the range is y greater than 0. So since x can be any numbers you want, there are no vertical asymptote. And this is clearly a decreasing function. And then as x approaches to positive infinity, so if you look all the way to the right, and then the curve approaches to zero, approaches to the x-axis, which is y equals to zero. As a result, the horizontal asymptote is y equals to zero. Let's take a look at the table value. So the table values on the left, I let x greater than or equal to zero. So when x is equals to zero, you have one half raised to the zero power that is equals to one. And then when x is equals to one, you take one half raised to the first power that equals to one half. When x is equals to two, you have one half times one half that equals to one fourth. When x equals to three, you have one half times itself three times. You have one over eight. So looking at the decimal, 1.5, 0 0.25, and then a point one point twenty five. So you can see as x increases, y decreases exponentially, right? So as becomes bigger and bigger, y becomes smaller and smaller. What happened when you pick a very large x value? So when x is very large, like infinity, you have one half raised to raised to the infinity power so that means you have to take one half multiply by itself many 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 times right so the numerator one times one times one times one is always equals to one but the denominator you have a two multiply is by itself many many times as a result you have two raised to a very large power so two raised to a very large power is a large number right so when you have one divided by a very large number then the quotient is very close to zero so that's why i said as x approaches to infinity y approaches to zero and that's how i determine y equals to zero is the horizontal asymptote okay how about when x is less than zero the table you see on the right so when x is equals to zero so for example when x is equals to negative three you have one half raised to the negative three so you have to uh, know your negative exponent so when you raise anything to a negative exponent you have to bring the entire term down to a denominator so in the denominator you have one half raised to the third power which is one eight so when you take one divided by a fraction then you have a one multiply the reciprocal of 1a which is 1 times a that is equals to a so that means when x is negative you have to bring the entire fractions down to the denominator once you finish multiplying the fraction you will bring that large denominator back to the top due to the reciprocal so as a result the final answer the y value is really really big so when you that's why what, what I wrote right here. So you bring the big denominator back to the top. So that's why the quotient is big. So when x is equals to negative one, 
one half divided by negative one that is equals to two. So when x is equals to negative two, you do the two times two in the denominator, and then you flip the denominator back to the top, then you get a four. When x is equals to negative three, y is equals to eight. So as x decreases, y increases exponentially. So as x approaches to negative infinity, y approaches to positive infinity. So that's why when you look up when you look to the left of the graph, so as x goes to negative infinity, y will just go all the way up. So let's say x equals to 100, so you have 1 half raised to negative 100, then you bring the whole thing down to the denominator. So once you finish uh, completing the power, so 2 raised to 100 power, which is huge, you have to flip the entire thing, the entire value, back to the numerator. So as a result, you get a very, very large numerator. So this is 2 equals to 100. Uh, don't worry about finding out what that equals to. All you have to know is this is a very large value. So that's why when x becomes x, when x goes to negative infinity, so like a negative 100, the y is very large. So that's why the graph goes all the way up. And then in case you still don't know what reciprocal is, so let's say 5 divided by 2 thirds. So that is 5 multiplied the reciprocal. So you are multiplying the 5 and the 3. So the 3 over 2 is the reciprocal of 2 over 3. And then uh, here is the graph. So allow me to paste the graph over here and then make this graph a little bit bigger because I, I also want to let you know that what happened when you change the x to negative x. So let me uh, use a different color. So what happened when you have f of x equals to 1 half raised to the negative x power? What, what, what happened? So when you do this, for this negative x, you have to recall the stuff you learn in function transformation. So function transformation. When you put a negative right next to x, so when you do this, you create a reflection on the y-axis. So what do I mean by reflection on the y-axis? So let's say, uh, take, take out your left, just put, put your pen on, on, on your table. Just take out your uh, right hand. And then I want you to have your hands open up so that your palm is facing the ceiling. All right, are you doing this? So your palm, take out your right hand, open it up. So your palm is now facing your ceiling, right? So do we agree that at this point, your thumb is pointing the right hand side? All right, so can you flip your hand, flip your hand 180 degree? So now your palm is facing the floor or, or your table. Now, do we agree that your thumb is facing the right hand, is facing the left hand side? Agree, right? So before the reflection, your palm, your palm is facing the ceiling, and your right thumb is facing the right side. After the reflection, your palm is facing the your the, the floor or your table, and your thumb is pointing to the left hand side. So that's what the reflection of y, y axis looks like. And then the graph will just look like this. So let me make this graph look smooth, just like this. So this is y or f of x equals to 1 half raised to negative x. And then for both, there are no vertical asymptote. And then the horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0. And then they share the same y-intercept as 0 comma 1. And then the domain is all real number. And then the range is y greater than zero. All right, so that's the end of this video. If you think my instruction is helpful and clear, give me a like, share this video on any social media like Facebook for me. If you're new to the channel, please spend two seconds to click the subscribe button down below. Truly appreciate your help. I will talk to you in the next one. Signing out.